so I was actually a altar boy until I was about 15, 16. Living for those robes, then, aren't they good? Of course, let me tell you something. When I put that robe on, I am the queen of the night. All right, babes, welcome to our first date island, where we set two strangers up on a blind phone date and eavesdrop in. Will our daters decide to meet in real life, or will they wish a black hole would open up and turn their bodies into spaghetti? I'm Bimini Bomboulash, and you're absolutely gorgeous! This is Blind Love on First Date Island. These are real phone dates. Neither person knows what the other one looks like, and they cannot see each other before or any point during the date. <sighs> oh. Let's meet our sexy singles. Nick, a 32-year-old student and radio DJ from Manchester. And George, a 27-year-old teacher from Leicester. Hello. Hi. You are right, George? What are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good, um, good. Well, this... How's your evening? It's good. I've had the longest day under the sun, but here we are. What is it you do? I am a student slash I work um, in logistics, so it's pretty fun. Um, I know it's early, but I should tell you that if there's no chemistry, we have to turn the gravity off and let them flow into space. Gutted. Um, I am a Catholic Christian, but I, I'd sort of say I'm a very liberal one. What about yourself? I'm actually Catholic as well, so that's oh, interesting. Stop it. So, what does that mean for like your sexuality and stuff, like being religious? Do tell, because I'm always intrigued about this. Well, I absolutely love it. It's my favourite thing to talk about. So, my family aren't religious at all, um, but they sent us to the local Catholic schools, and we became Catholic while we were there. And then I sort of came to the realization: I think I want to be a priest, yeah, or a brother. Uh, but I couldn't, because uh, people born female can't be priests in the Catholic Church. So I tried to figure out, you know, which one of these can I let go of? Can I transition and not be Catholic? Uh, can I be Catholic and accept that I don't need to transition? Mm -hmm. And after kind of three years of, of painstaking torture of myself, like no one else was involved, I kind of realised that I had to do both of them. So, you know, I'm now a Catholic transgender teacher of religious education in a Catholic school. The things we love to see. Look at you, you know what? You're st I love you, that personal journey for you because it sounds like you have you know what you wanted and you went on again. So, kudos to you. I'm actually blushing a bit. <laughs> so, what about you? What's, what's, what's your story? I was born um, in, in the Caribbean and I moved to the UK like maybe 11 years ago. Um, so I was actually a altar boy until I was about 15, 16. Living for those robes then, aren't they good? Of course, let me tell you something. When I put that robe on, I am the queen of the night. Like with you no know, Whitney Houston. Sashaying down, yes. down the aisle. Like... While I like, while I robe that incense, like, hey bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I grew up quite in a very, um, religious household when I moved to the UK and stuff. I just knew that I liked boys and girls. Whenever I told yeah. someone that's how I felt, they were like, hmm, no, you're just greedy. I was like, if I was greedy, I'll go to the buffet. <laughs> how long have you been single? Um, I feel like forever. I've only occasionally ever been on like a few dates. Yeah. I think until I'd started to transition, which is now about two years ago, medical transition. Yeah. So I've been on testosterone for two years and had chest surgery about 18 months ago. And since before then, I just mm -hmm. wasn't very comfortable. Yeah. Right mind, wrong body kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Whereas I've been on, I've sort of been on like a... All right. I know I'm being paid to throw shade, but this is actually getting too cute now. So what do you look for? So, ideal partner, tall, dark, and handsome. So I'm halfway there. I'm five eight. You, you could be more than halfway there. What really just gets on under your nerves? Okay, someone that is unduly optimistic. Yeah. You know, like someone that would wake up every single morning and be like, "Today is the greatest day of my life." Like, if you just put your mind to it, it'll be great. Um, someone that you know, like with inspirational quotes. Yeah. I also, uh, I know that people have genuine reasons for not drinking, but I couldn't date someone that wasn't partial to it, like a wine <sighs> or an espresso martini. Oh, this is what we live for. Where have you been all my life? <laughs> um, will you marry me? <laughs> I'll make sure and get my mom to buy a hat, definitely. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah, I feel like she's going to be like, oh my God, you found a one. <laughs> and just when you thought it couldn't get any cuter, here comes the love toad. Have we actually found true love on the island, love toad? Mate, hello? 
I'm starting to think it's just a normal toad. Let's ask Nick and George instead. Well, George, I have to admit, I had a great time, to be fair. I hope to see you again. It's been probably the best day I've ever had. I'll, I'm glad to leave a smile on that fit face, so there you go. <laughs> it's very smiling. <laughs> the things we love to see. <laughs>